very warm good morning to everyone. I hope I'm clearly audible, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, yes, ma'am. A very warm good morning to all the dignitaries, honorable participants, faculty members present here with us on national seminar on women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth, which is being organized by Women's Cell and Entrepreneurship Development Cell of Sanatan Dharm College, Ambala Khan, in collaboration with Directory of Higher Education, Haryana. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone on this online national platform. Entrepreneurship today has become a buzzword. Young minds, they're actually like sponges who are looking for the right input to soak in it. And specifically talking about women entrepreneurs, they have the potential to be the biggest force in India's economic growth story today. The Women's Cell and Entrepreneurship Development Cell of Sanatan Dharm College has been actively engaged in providing platform to students for developing and exhibiting their skills. Every student has some sort of potential to grow as a successful individual, but they certainly require some guidance to harness that potential. And a college makes tremendous efforts to nurture a passion for self-employment and provides skilled training to even girls of the college. So carrying the legacy forward, now may I please invite the guiding force behind this seminar, our Honorable Principal Sir, Dr. Rajinder Singh, to kindly present the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Shavi. May I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. I, on behalf of Sanatam Dharam College in Balakant, Human Cell and Entrepreneurship Development Cell of the College, would like to welcome the chief guest of this seminar, Dr. Manjula Chaudhary, Dean Academic Affairs, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. I would also like to welcome all the participants from the different part of the country. Institution of higher learning play a vital role in shaping the ethos of a society. They also serve as the most appropriate platform where the youth is prepared for the unique challenges of life. Sanatan Dharm College in Balakan has been serving the cause of education by imparting value-based modern education for more than a century now and creating a benchmark for other institutions. Established at Lahore in 1916, under the dynamic influence of Bharat Ratna, Mahamana Pandit Madan Mohan Maliyaji, the backbone of the Sanatan Dharma. After the partition of the country, the college was re-established in Ambala, and the foundation stone of this building was led by none other than the India's first president, Dr. Rajinder Prashadji, on 3rd October 1951. The college has since then scaled new heights of excellence in the field of higher education. With over 3,000 students on its role today, the college offers education in the stream of science, commerce, and arts. Beside traditional undergraduate and postgraduate courses, the institution offers vocational and self-financing courses which cater to the diverse needs of the students of the region and enhance their employability skills. Over the year, it has evolved dynamically in accordance with the radical changes that have taken place in pedagogy, policies, and information technology. The Indian economy, which is on the growth path, is characterized by its distinct divide between the rich and the poor. A significant portion of the population is below the poverty line. Therefore, the future plans must focus on the inclusive growth by creating economic opportunity to all segments of the population and ensuring equal access to them. In India, women constitute almost 50% of the population, but the female work participation is just 18 to 20%. Women entrepreneurship, which is still in its initial stage, is most appropriate and valuable solution to improve the female work participation. Women entrepreneurs account for only 
of the total enterprises reflecting the scope of their huge growth the growth of women entrepreneur in india is necessary to ensure the financial and social inclusion of women in the society towards the inclusive growth women entrepreneur in india start with a huge disadvantage with no property rights no title to assets needs to maintain the work life balance and the social restrictions the growth of the women entrepreneur can be facilitated through creating an optimal environment and strengthening the institutional arrangement for providing adequate financial marketing and technological arrangement for providing for the, for the social inclusion of women who form a large proportion of the vulnerable vulnerable society uh, section of the society therefore enabling the inclusive growth in the country once again on i on behalf of sanatan dharm college ambalakin would like to extend my deep sense of gratitude to the chief guest of today's seminar and all the resource person and participant of this one day seminar jai hind over to you shavi thank you so much sir for setting the stage for us to begin with today's seminar Certainly, women can contribute to the economy not just as job seekers but also as job creators by being women entrepreneurs. The country's economy actually could grow much faster if women were part of its workforce. And when we talk about inclusive growth, it means that the economic growth that is distributed fairly across the society and creating opportunity for everyone. Now, may I please invite Ms. Nina, convener of Women's Cell. to kindly introduce the theme of the seminar over to you ma'am the second ma'am is just connecting with us Uh, Shavi, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. We are clearly audible. Okay, thank you so much, Shavi, ma'am. Ah, uh, first of all, I, Hina, convener of Women's Cell Sanatan Dharam College, welcome you all in one day national webinar on women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth. In the globally challenging world, every individual is required to look for self sustenance opportunities. gradually the number of entrepreneurs has been rising in the world and females have a special role to play here women of the current era are more progressive and play a role in meeting the economic needs of the family with increasing opportunities for women entrepreneurs in every walk of life the challenges are also increasing every sector has a different requirement of experience and skills this type of webinar aims to bring together leading entrepreneurs academicians scientists students and research scholars to exchange and share their experiences so the theme of this seminar uh, aims to understand and elaborate the importance of women entrepreneurship to create awareness about new entrepreneurial opportunities for women to provide a platform for the academicians professionals and research scholars to discuss the ideas for women entrepreneurship and to discuss the future better time for women entrepreneurs so let's learn something new and add some interesting facts in our pocket thank you so much over to you chavi ma'am Thank you so much, Ina Ma'am. Uh, certainly, the theme is actually a meaningful reflection and interpretation of the goals of the seminar, which have been presented in a very concise manner by you. And uh, moving ahead, I am extremely delighted to mention uh, that our chief guest for the day is none other than Dr. Manjula Chaudhary, Dean Academic Affairs, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra, 
and now may i please invite dr gidhar gopal head of department of computer science of sanatan dharm college ambala kanch to kindly introduce our worthy chief guest over to you sir thank you sir even uh, i hope i am audible yes sir good uh, morning to one and all uh, it is uh, indeed a moment of happiness for me that i got an opportunity to introduce our chief guest today who is uh, professor manjula choudhary ma'am she is uh, a professor department of tourism and hotel management and now currently she is holding the position of dean academic affairs in kurukshetra university kurukshetra so let me throw some more glimpses on her achievements because earlier we i had already studied somewhere that people are there to listen to the speaker not to the introducer only so let me brief her achievements in a nutshell i hope i can do that because it's a very long bio data she is an ex director of indian institute of tourism and travel management ministry of tourism government of india with a vast 35 plus more years of experience in teaching various academic positions in the past like dean faculty of commerce and management chairperson advisor to the international students director distance education currently she is dean academic affairs then nodal officer to the rusa scheme she is also the coordinator of the nac as well as the coordinator to the national education policy 2020 in the university 20 students have completed their phd under her ibel guidance and one student is currently pursuing so with this vast research experience lot of research papers goes to her credit with the also more than 10 books she has authored as uh, author and co-author as well she has also contributed in modules preparation for tourism and hospitality service management in the arpit refresher courses that is annual refresher program in teaching and lot of awards and honors has been already awarded to ma'am like nari sashaktikaran samman by prerna society in 2017 then felicitation by indian institute of tourism and travel management honored by lovely professional university felicitation by indian tourism and hospitality congress for contribution towards tourism and hospitality education as well as honored and felicitated by tourism industry through the their annual events also by sohm and indian institute of tourism and travel management awarded best tourism institute of the country in 2014 so i hope the list is long and uh, so i tried my best to cover it up in a very brief so uh, we are lo we love to hear you ma'am on behalf of sanatan dharm college i welcome you again thank you thank you very much Yeah, you can start now. Okay, thank you. A very good morning to all of you, and I congratulate uh, principal of the college, uh, Dr. Rajinder Singh ji, the coordinators of this event, and all the persons present here for thinking of this uh, wonderful theme and organizing this uh, particular event. So the women cell of the college also gets the credit for coming up with this particular. Uh, theme and uh, uh, taking on board so many participants so that we can think in this direction the theme is uh, really very exciting and just 3 uh, days back we had this international women's day on that day i delivered few few talks on like how how the what what is the status of women as far as country is concerned i mean all these things are interrelated so basically when we talk about women entrepreneurship this is related to status of women in the society and this is related to status of entrepreneurship in the society if we look at the entrepreneurship the, the like india is not among the top countries of the world because we don't have that entrepreneurship culture whatever entrepreneurship we have been having in india is traditionally among some of the communities like marwadis like gujaratis and uh, we were they had the tra tradition that everybody has to enter into the business and run run their businesses and of course the women entrepreneurship is far left behind if we look at the world economic forum index of uh, gender parity 
I mean, especially in 2021, because of so many reasons like COVID, the things were really bad. I mean, in, in all, the index was prepared for 156 countries and India is ranking at 140, at, at almost at the bottom, very, very bad. And in Southeast Asia, only Pakistan and Afghanistan are behind us. So obviously, we are not competing with these countries at, at any point of time. If you look at this uh, entrepreneurship statistics, there is no official data on entrepreneurship. Whatever indexes are prepared, these are by private organizations, like one of the acceptable indexes by Master Visa Card. And when they have prepared this index, again, they have done it for 65 countries and India ranks at 57. So things are not very encouraging. That's why I will I thought of sharing my experiences, how we created this entrepreneurship ecosystem in our university, because that might be helped to your college as well. And that might be helpful to many persons who are from colleges in attending this workshop so that maybe they can follow same path or maybe a little divergent path and create a culture of entrepreneurship in their respective institutions. I, if, if we look at the like where are the female entrepreneurship is happening that the top three countries consistently have been uh, US and then there is New Zealand and then of course there is Canada where a lot of females are uh, opening their businesses and the, the point is like why why it is not happening why what what is uh, preventing women from doing it there are very few women who are into the big businesses of course as far as msme is concerned small businesses 20 percent share of entrepreneurship approximately goes to the women entrepreneurs so some of the barriers which were foreseen or which have been identified in developing countries especially they are like one is uh, facility of capital this applies to both men and women the capital is just not available if it is available, I mean, it is available with great difficulty. Second is there are cultural and social norms, particularly in North India, especially in Haryana, everybody wants a government job. Who wants to become an entrepreneur if a government job is available? So, so that, that, that's, that's a problem of mindset. Uh, there is social problem, there is cultural problem. And then, of course, the female aspirations. I don't know how many females aspire to become entrepreneurs. You do a survey in your college, there will be very few. And many of might even not know what entrepreneurship is. Forget about becoming an entrepreneur. So yeah, they are not aspirational. We, we did a training program in our university in science courses like, like MSc Physics, Chemistry, Geology, Botany. These are the areas which get maximum number of applications as far as admissions are concerned. And they are dominated, of course, by girls because admissions are done on merit. And we were surprised to find out that all of them want to become uh, teachers in plus two. And that way, the people who are not really gold medalists, who are doing courses like management, tourism, they, they are more aspirational. They want to open their businesses. They want to travel to the foreign shore. They want to do something which is, which is not uh, normal, which is not very common. So the, the aspirations are completely missing. And then another thing which has been identified is the governance. The supporting structure is not there. How many educational institutions have this supporting infrastructure? Approximately very few IITs and IIMs, they have been having this culture of corporatization. But otherwise, this culture is completely missing. And of course, education. In education, we don't teach them to be entrepreneur. So how, how would the, a girl student or a boy student would know? Like this can be one possible career option. And then, of course, there are so many structural barriers. You, you mentioned in your family that I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to leave my job. I mean, it's, it's next, next to uh, impossible. I don't think anybody would let you do that. They will say, Ki, I mean, you are getting a secure income. Why do you want to venture into the uncharted territory? So how, how did we do it in our university? In fact, way back in 2019, we brought a, we were already having this RUSA project, RUSA 1, then we had this RUSA 2.0. RUSA 2.0 came with a different set of aspirations. It was in 2019. So we have prepared a proposal and we have submitted the proposal to Ministry of Education, Government of India, regarding how we are going to, what, what we will do with this money. They also wanted to know like so expenditure is fine, but what will be the outcome of the expenditure? So we mentioned that outcome of the expenditure also, but two directives were very, very clear from the Ministry of Education. One, there has to be digitization of the university and university shall be completely digitized. Two, the focus should be on employment, entrepreneurship and innovation. 
So when this Rusa 2.0 project was uh, like they, they were inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi ji, uh, it was an online inauguration across whole of the country, in including colleges and uh, universities. I think at that point of time, the, the only Mewat College was part of that inauguration along with Kurukshetra University. So the, the, the directive came from the ministry that you create a center for innovation, entrepreneurship, incubation, employability. And within that, you organize all your activities. So that was in like, it, it was something which, which jolted us. And we sit together, I along with my team, and we started thinking that, that we should take this as an opportunity. We should not take it as a burden. So we created that center. And then we defined the, we clearly defined the outcome, like what are we going to do? Fortunately, we had very, very good funding as part of that RUSA 2.0 project with a lot of flexibility. So we built the center for entrepreneurship and this innovation, incubation and employability in such a manner that we took everybody on board. So we created five skilling centers and uh, five uh, training centers under this particular uh, like uh, domain and of course the some some of the centers we opened were in sciences some were about this uh, especially about this entrepreneurship and then skill development and center for continuing education so basically we created the whole ecosystem this is something which is missing in in most of the educational institutions so first thing how we begin we created the ecosystem where we created different units with well-defined targets, well-defined objectives. And then we put the some of the identified people on the job. Like this is the brief uh, we have created for you. Now you carry it forward. You work on it and you further devise the ecosystem. Fortunately, my, my colleagues and the people who are who were working with us, including we, we included students also in our team, including a team of students. They did not disappoint us. They, they really worked very hard. So what happened? For example, we opened a center for entrepreneurship. How did this started functioning? Initially, when they organized a seminar, I mean, again, it was a jolt to us that nobody wanted to attend the seminar on entrepreneurship. Of course, in the universities, you can push students into attending any academic activities. So did that, but, but, but then it came to us that we should have a voluntary participation rather than this type of participation. So what we did next, the first seminar was done. We were not very happy. And what we did after that, we circulated information across the universities that those who want to become the entrepreneur, those who have some entrepreneurial aspirations, they shall become member of this center. So out of 15,000 students on campus, we got willing request only from 500. We thought it's a good beginning. We took those 500 on board. And after that, we were training them every month. We were organizing uh, like awareness camps for them. And then uh, unfortunately, this 2020 came when the institutions were closed for an hour, year, almost a year. So we did not stop our work. We continued online. And what we were doing when we were doing these workshops, one, we were creating awareness, what entrepreneurship is, two, we were getting the lectures organized from successful entrepreneurs. They were telling our students what their life's journey has been and how, how they in, entered into a business and how, how they became a successful businessman. So this, this was acting as a motivational purpose. Of course, I mean, no, no two journeys can be same in entrepreneurship. Everybody has to like create its own journey. And after that, we also took on board some of, some of the organizations which are supporting entrepreneurship. They gave the training on from, from say zero to end, like how, how to create an idea, how, how to get a funding and how to open your business, how to market your product, how to know whether your product will be successful or not. So despite all, all these problems due to, because of this uh, COVID on and off uh, situation, and out of those 500, now we have four entrepreneurs. Two are selling handicrafts items on Amazon. They are very, very successful. Two girls, they decided to work it out together. And apart from that, two boys also, they have opened a business which was not successful. They opened another business which was not successful. Now they are opening third business. So this is the spirit of entrepreneurship. Never, never say die. Like it's not that if you have failed in one business, you decide now I will not be an entrepreneur any longer. Rather, I will take take go for a job. And uh, 
this this time when we organized their workshop we invited all four of them because they were among them so they are shared they shared their experiences now we have many more who are coming up with very creative ideas our teachers help them in fine tuning those ideas also and uh, so 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 as a result what has happened a culture has been created 500 number might seem very small in the 15000 but initially we did not have even one it was zero so 500 has now started multiplying we are getting a lot of uh, requests from the students they want to come on board of this entrepreneurship cell they want to attend all their training programs and and in the, the Fortunate thing is that the girls from the villages, they have a lot of good ideas and they want to become the entrepreneurs. So there are so many opportunities in almost every, every segment. Second thing what we did was like uh, this, this entrepreneurship was one idea. But second thing what we did was we also opened an uh, incubation center. That was particularly in science and technology because uh, the focus area that we have chosen in uh, RUSA 2.0 was material science and geo geophysics and all these areas. So we opened an incubation center on science and technology. And what was the first thing that we did there? Because uh, it means that we have to take student on board and then we have to do the ideation. Then we have to do the incubation. We have to conduct that into a product. The product has to be marketed and of course, capital has to be arranged, everything. Imagine in a university which has never thought it will enter into this area. We were doing all this and all the teachers. Initially, I, I, I also faced a lot of reluctance. I virtually had to push them into it because they were of the opinion that they are work is only teaching and what they have got to do with this entrepreneurship and what this incubation. So in incubation, what we did, the first thing was since we were thinking of bringing startups on our campuses, right now we have one startup on our campuses. We have given 25 lakh grant to that startup and we have five startups lined up and we when I think next month we will be taking their presentations on the advice of experts. We will give, be giving funding to them. We are also giving a space to them on campus to run their businesses. Of course, we will have a we we don't want that money back, but we will have a share into the startup. And when the company starts running profit, we will get the profits out of that. Uh, when when the value of shares goes how that's how we have prepared our business model. But it took us some time because. Uh, since it's in science and technology, I put science and technology people into it. Like you frame the startup policy. The problem was that most of the scientists, they don't know anything about management. So I connected them with the persons who are from management. They came up with a very elaborate startup policy. All of you can read it. It is on our website. So it basically tells like how we are going to take the startups on board. Again, it was the same challenge. Students have never thought of that they will develop a product or they will sell a product or they will incubate an idea. So again, the same thing was adopted. We took one teacher on board from university is a big ecosystem. So we took one teacher and one student on board from different uh, departments. And then again, the same system of workshops started we call the best of best. We call under 35 innovators so that students can connect and students can identify with them because these were young innovators. So we called them, we started talking to them. So we created a type of environment where, I mean, there was a lot of hype, like everybody was knowing, yes, there has to be innovation and there has to be something called incubation. And then students were asked to develop their ideas with the help of the faculty members. And then some ideas were chosen and selected and the selected ideas were rewarded for 25,000 each. So we rewarded almost 25 ideas. Once they were given that idea, they were told now they have to develop this idea into a potential product, which is marketable. And uh, after that, the, the 25 ideas, they were screened by an expert committee where experts were taken from the, all over India. There were financial experts. Uh, there were startup experts, there were businessmen, there were, of course, our faculty members. And then we decided to give funding to one startup that is on uh, the, the boy is working on home automation. 
very very exciting project which our team felt is is but then we also get some very wonderful ideas somebody heard and somebody came like person was working in israel he says i can convert this uh, paddy husk into particle board and this particle board can be used for the con for for converting into furniture i said the idea is very good but then you have to come through the proper route you start you apply for our startup funding read our startup policy so we as soon as we invite the applications you do this it means now people have become aware that kurukshetra university has this startup ecosystem the students also are getting tuned to that but it has required a lot of hard work on the part of staff this is i am telling you because uh, there are many teachers who have joined this if you want to create a startup ecosystem then there is of course lot of hard work and students were equal participants in this our startup system so since we know that the funding that has been given to us for this uh, incubation cell is limited it will not continue forever so what we did we connected with the right parties we signed an mou with the chandigarh angel investors because angel investors and venture capitalists are very important for entrepreneurship these are the people who give the funding so we signed up with chandigarh angel investors they are ready to fund anybody who comes with a good idea and we we thought that after we, that we will start getting the funds through chandigarh angel investors we also sign an mou with the it delhi there is a center for ftii the technology transfer which works on patent and innovation so they said they will support us with the technology transfer of the patents of of our teachers because right now as far as academic institutions are concerned we don't move beyond academic patents our focus is at academic patents which can be used for the purpose of api and which can be used for the purpose of promotion while if one technology is transferred it can bring a lot of revenues to the teacher concerned as well as to the institutions where the teacher is working so right now we are not thinking in this direction that this can be one way of supporting financially the institution the person and so many people who are associated with this we also sign an mou with the gyan foundation gyan foundation is a type of grassroots organization which does a, they, they do the yatras and they move from place to place and uh, they go to almost every village and they identify like who is innovating what they basically uh, make a database of jugad and uh, when when they were signing an mou they said we have signed we on on our uh, database we have a person from yamuna nagar they they took the name of that person in fact at that point of time we did not know because we are not uh, connecting with the villages or we are not connecting with the towns we were people were innovating or they were entering into this uh, entrepreneurship activities so we 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 did the right connections and we got connected to the right people as a result the students who were on board with us they got a wider platform from where they could get the ideas or where they can spread their ideas so first thing what we did was we worked on entrepreneurship cell second thing what we did was we worked on this incubation and innovation cell third thing what we did was we worked on patent and technology transfer we were working on so many things simultaneously it was not possible to be unidirectional and what we did there on patent and technology transfer in fact the our teachers were writing the research papers our teachers were doing the patent also but i mean the, the technically they were not really working that well i mean they themselves did not know how the patent has to be done so they were taking the help of some private parties and uh, the, their their patents were not marketable so first first we thought we will do it through ftii iit delhi they also were supporting into it but then their charges were very very high so we had to make this economically viable also so recently i mean our own alumni like he is from chemistry department from the university and he is a he is a renowned patent attorney he himself came that i want to support the university we just took the opportunity by heart and we appointed him honorary professor patent he said he would not charge any money he would not even charge for the patent fees he is ready to he said i i give crores of tax in a year so it doesn't really matter to me so we we lapped at that opportunity and then we we took him on board as the honorary professor patent and uh, the, the person is an expert and then all our teachers who want to get their innovations patented we route it through him i mean he is a scientist also and in in the in the same research he can tell the innovator that like you do this experiment also you do this experiment also 
So within one week of his appointment, he has got us two patents that takes al us almost one year if we keep on struggling on our own. And of one patent, he is saying, you do one more experiment, I will, I will get the, the technology transfer for you. So, I mean, this is what this structure is to be provided. This is what is missing. We don't have ecosystem at all. We are struggling unnecessarily. An expert can do the same job in one week, which we were unable to do in the whole year. And it was not serving any purpose. So we worked on these uh, three main important dimensions. Patent and technology transfer, we have started working only very recently. And entrepreneurship and incubation, we have been working for the past two years. Of course, I mean, things do not end here because once we fund a student to the tune of 25 lakhs, that's the maximum we give to a person. And after that, the record has to be kept. It is not just we hand over 25 lakhs and the person can spend the way he can. We have to keep the complete accounts like we will give it in phases. We will monitor the progress also how, how this uh, uh, product development is taking place, whether this is effective or not. So again and again, we have to take the help of the industry experts. But right now we, we are flooded with the applications. The first, the, the, the first application was difficult to get. We were pushing the students, please put in an application. And this is a situation where we are even funding. But nobody wanted to put up an application. They did not want to become an entrepreneur. Now we have six applications are lined up. And the people are coming from as far as Israel. The, our students who have moved there, they want to be back and open the businesses here. And we have many other people who are asking us, more students who are asking us that, that, that we want to uh, get the training and we want to also be part of this ecosystem. So, so this is what I'm saying. These, these are the barriers. If we create a structure, the barriers can be overcome. Students are very, very creative. They come up very innovative and very good designs. We came up with a lot of innovations in online teaching and online classes technology. And somebody came up with an idea that in offline class also, they will install a camera and they can identify who is attentive, who is not attentive at the end of the class. And uh, after that, the student can be told you are attentive, you have not been attentive. So they use some type of face recognition technology. So see, so see, like uh, currently we are into the industrial age 4.0 and most of the students who are part of this workshop, they are millennials and millennials are those who were born when the smartphones have come. So they have grown with the smartphones technologically, they are very savvy and industrial age 4.0 is where our cyber and physical systems merge. And we, I'm, I'm able to talk to you through this platform. This is an example of industrial age 4.0 also. Otherwise, this would not have been possible. So naturally, in this age of industrial 4.0, with the millennials around, we have new problems and we need new solutions. And these uh, solutions become your source of entrepreneurship. So I was telling you about our uh, MOU with Gyan. And if you look at the Gyan Foundation, how do they work? Right now, we, we, we are floating a, like a proposal uh, on, on behalf of the Gyan, where all the students will be told to identify problems around us. This can be problem in their classroom. This can be problem in their institution. It can be in their neighborhood. It can be in their city. It can be in their homes. They have to identify a problem which needs solution. After that, once they have been identified, they have identified their problem, next step will be, they will be asked to think of solutions, either on their own or with their help of their, their friends or with the help of their cohort. And once they come up with the solutions, the GAN team will be sitting with them because they have been doing it for the past so many years, like uh, in, in across all the country. And then they will tell them like why one solution is viable, one solution is not viable. The, the motto of Gyan is the solution has to be simple. I mean, uh, no solution which is complex can really work for very long. After that, they will advise them what solution is good and what solution is not good. Then they will tell them like with the how, how, how the solution can be converted into an idea of entrepreneurship. Then they will connect to the venture capitalists who are ready to fund as far as the solution of the social problems are concerned or any scientific problems are concerned. And then of course, then they start the journey of entrepreneurship. The problem with entrepreneurship is why females don't want to enter into entrepreneurship. It, it takes the 
it takes lot of resilience it takes lot of persistence it takes uh, uh, like it requires a steel heart because there can be so many ups and downs in the market you you come up with a product you start a business and suddenly there is a lockdown and uh, these days this biosecurity has become a threat suddenly there is a lockdown you don't know what to do with your product you don't know how to go to your market so maybe like uh, if if we know that this bio threats are going to be persist in our environment there can be so many solutions which can be offered to tackle this bio threat so we have many students who work in microbiology biotechnology and all these areas they are aware of microbes also they are also aware how the microbes get stopped there can be innovation as far as masks are concerned we all know that wearing a mask is not very comfortable for a very long time of point of view. so if somebody comes up in an idea where mask can be as good as uh, like if they are comfortable naturally there is no reason that this idea is not going to sell so many many people have come up with like uh, fashionable malls masks during this period which have really sold very well so more than fashion we need something which can stop these bio threats so so this is one area which the students can think of second area is online education we all know like uh, sooner or later it is going to come government is mandating as part of the nep 2020 that 40% education has to be go, go to online so in any subject 40% has to go online right now they are encouraging is next year it is going to be a dictate so it has to be adopted because if we have to achieve the target of 50% of ger in higher education it's not possible with the physical classrooms it has to be online now there are so many areas in online education where students can can come up with innovation and uh, maybe college can have its own youtube channel college can have its own online courses and uh, now this uh, nep 2020 says that all colleges have to be autonomous simultaneously ugc is saying all autonomous colleges can offer online courses so this shall be taken as an opportunity by the institution by the students by the teachers for entrepreneurship rather than getting scared of it right now like i have been uh, like uh, leading nep in our university i feel there is a lot of uh, discouragement and there is a lot of resistance to this nep 2020 everybody is against online exams online classrooms everybody is against this blended form of education i often tell them you take it or you leave it this is going to be future of education better is if we stay prepared if we do it in a much professional manner if we change ourselves if we change our students also if we change our institutions also only then we will be able to survive into the future otherwise institutions come and institutions go they may vanish also new institutions will come so the, these are the areas where the educational institutions have to be very very aggressive in in promotion of innovation as well as in promotion of uh, this entrepreneurship abilities in male and the female students equally and only only then we will be able to survive as far as future is concerned so talking about this uh, nep promotes a lot of entrepreneurship uh, i'm sure that you might have done many workshops on nep also NEP promotes entrepreneurship and NEP specifically talks about industrial age 4.2 where it says that you have to do courses on machine learning then artificial intelligence blockchain and on these areas please don't think that NEP or industrial age 4.0 is all about technology technology is fine but then technological skills are something which keep on evolving maybe in industrial age 5.0 we will have something else but simultaneously you have social skills which which are rather uh, consistent i mean if if you need the good communication skills you will need the good communication skills irrespective of uh, whatever industrial age we are passing through so maybe some student can come up with an idea like how the communication skills of the students can be improved you don't have to follow the past models past is not going to repeat now when we are thinking of so much changes happening around us so what what i believe is that every institution every teacher every student they the institution shall create a, a structural system where this entrepreneurship and innovation can be promoted teachers have to change their mindset that they are there only for teaching from the available textbooks a lot more is required than the available textbooks the students also have to change their mindset that they they are the only the passive learners who keep on listening to 
very boring lectures from morning to evening because lectures can be very very boring whether they are online or they are offline so be participative be a participant in the growth of the in your growth in the growth of the institution in the growth of the nation you don't have to be a bystander in the whole process so so with these words i i would like to close my talk i think i have shared my experiences and they will uh, i'm sure that these are going to benefit the attendees thank you very much thanks for your patience here thank you so much ma'am for delivering such an impactful address and certainly our participants have gained a lot of insights from today's this particular session and definitely when you have actually told us that the innovation ecosystem and the entrepreneurship in your, you know initiatives of an organization play a very crucial role and definitely when you've mentioned that uh, the combination of technical skills along with social skills that is required and we really hope that being motivated with your words today that all of us will be able to imbibe all of that all of that in our organization and even our participants will be able to do that uh, so now may i uh, please invite dr arti the convener of entrepreneurship development cell and head of department of electronics and it to kindly propose a vote of thanks to dr manjula choudhury ma'am for her impactful address Ati ma'am, you're not audible. Am I audible to be ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Now you're audible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Manjula ma'am. It was really, really an impactful session with you. Uh, you told us how can we start. We always start with the problems, and at the last, when we achieve our target, all the problems we forget, and we try to do very best after that. And you also did the same. Ma'am, uh, I just want to tell you that here in our Sanatan Dharma College, me and uh, Chavi is also taking care of entrepreneurship development cell and the same problems we are getting right now. So after your lecture, after your session, we have come to know that whatever the problems are being coming, we don't have to sit idle. We have to put more efforts to inculcate the skills of the entrepreneurship and other aspects in our students. Only then we will be able to get some output. Um, you told us that uh, you are working on entrepreneurship development cell at your university and you also started incubation center and then you are also in process of the patent writing. Ma'am, I'm very happy to tell you that in QTIC Innovation 2019, we also participated and we got the second prize at that time. Uh, two prizes were there, both of for the home automation system. So ARVA is also home automation system, but the same thing as you told that the idea we got, but it was not converted into the entrepreneurship. So we put our efforts to the students that you should start this startup. And Dr. Rekha ma'am told me that if the students are interested, they will put the grant in that project as well. But it was our failure that we could not uh, mature this project in the entrepreneurship, but after your words, we are very much motivated that in the coming time, we will try to put more efforts to our entrepreneurship cell. And second request, what I want to tell you that as uh, I am from the science background and I don't have that much of skills so that I can encourage my students regarding entrepreneurship. So if if there is any possibility to have some training programs for the teachers also, because we have many colleges affiliated to Kurukshetra University and many colleges are also trying to develop entrepreneurship development cell. So if it will be very good for us if we get some faculty development programs regarding this entrepreneurship. So then also we, we will be able to put more efforts and we'll, we will come with the, some more ideas to the university as well. So with this, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. It was really an inspiring lecture from your side to all of us. And I hope all the participants have also got new things out of the session. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us and sparing your time with us. Thank you, Arti. Thank you very much. We will certainly do an FDP for the teachers. You gave me an idea. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much, Manjula, ma'am. And uh, now, with your permission, can we proceed ahead with the next technical? The, sure, the sure, sure, sure. Thank you. I'm leaving. Thank them. you, ma'am.
So once again, a very good morning to everyone. And we hope that we have imbibed a lot of thoughts, ideas from the first session of today's seminar. And carrying ahead now, uh, may we please start with the first technical session for today. And for that, may I please invite Ms. Amandeep Kaur to kindly introduce our worthy resource person, Dr. Nitin Gupta. Over to you, Aman ma'am. Thank you, Shavi ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, worthy Dr. Nitin Gupta, who is going to enlighten us with his views on the theme of the today's seminar. Dr. Nitin Gupta, who is professor and head finance at Mittal School of Business, lovely professional university, has a highly skilled and result-oriented profession with solid academic preparation, holding a post-graduation degree in commerce and 18 years of extensive teaching experience. He has completed his doctorate with fellowship by Indian Council of Social Science Research, Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. As far as research is concerned, he has been working on international business and strategy, sustainability of economic development in emerging economics and innovation and entrepreneurship. He has specialization in editing content at, and is involved with publication houses for revision of certain chapters, example, financial treasury, forex management associated with the Institute of Company Secretaries of India. And he has published many research papers along with supervision of PhD scholars. He possesses three years of international experience in Africa. He is member in various committees related to accreditation, recruitment, examination, conferences, Department Doctorate Board of Commerce and Management, for evaluation of state of the art seminar, annual seminar for the PhD students. He has been awarded with certificate of appreciation by IBS Hyderabad, ICFI Foundation for Higher Education, in recognition of supervision for award winning project during summer internship program 2013, and second prize in national conference organized by management. Currently, being professor in head finance at Mittal School of Business, he is managing multiple projects effectively and provide decisive team leadership in a fast paced environment. Today, we are in a real treat that Dr. Nitin Gupta is amongst us to bless us with his massive experience on entrepreneurship and leadership skills. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming him on this platform. Welcome, sir, and thanks attend for sparing your valuable time for us. Thanks. Uh... Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Madam Amandeep, Madam, and uh, thank you the organizing committee for uh, giving uh, my introduction. And uh, I just want to share uh, my PPT. Will it be possible? Can I have given the rights? Yes, yes sir. sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes. Sir. Okay. So your screen is blank uh -huh. from yeah actually uh, you can stop sharing stop the screen and uh, reshare again it might be some technical problem yeah now try to re retrieve things is 
it is fine now yeah it is fine now uh, go okay. to spreadsheet uh, okay i am uh, taking i have taken 30 40 seconds probably because at one side introduction uh, madam is given my introduction and i am closing down my one of the session and uh, uh, i am on the verge of session uh, starting new class so parallel i am engaged now in two session one in the class and one in this particular conference so technology is good technology is great the previous presenter uh, dr manjula she said that we are in the um, uh, she talk about i think probably various aspects what the university is doing and uh, we are on the industry 4.0 and she said that definitely we are looking on industry 5, 5.0. So technology is great, correct? Parallel, I am having a class 10 to 11. So I am engaging in this session also. And uh, I have completed my session and I am on the, uh, I am again having the class at 11 to 12. So I am one side, I am in the class and I am addressing the students, the faculty for uh, today's national seminar. That is on uh, women entrepreneurship and uh, inclusive growth. Uh, I think it was sponsored by the Directorate of Higher Education. So first and foremost, I would like to thank the yes. organizing committee, the principal, the convener of the program, giving me an opportunity to speak on uh, women entrepreneurship and especially with regard to inclusive growth of uh, Indian economy. Though uh, my area of specialization is finance, I am teaching uh, different area. Keeping in mind the entrepreneurial orientation in the last three or four years, but I have witnessed uh, the orientation of students, especially the girls, if you talk about uh, what we have seen in the last two years during the pandemic time, the uh, contribution of the entrepreneurs, the contribution of the women, especially. I am sure we, have, we will definitely count uh, the contribution of women's, women's entrepreneurship and the inclusion of the growth in the economy probably by 2025, by 2020, uh, 2030. So, uh, Hina Madam had given me a call a few days back and she said that, sir, you have to speak on today's session. So from that day, I try to find out, I have seen the brochure, it talks about various aspects. Then I think that uh, which topic suits me especially and how I am going to match the theme, women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth. So I did. Uh, some information. I have read uh, the articles given by the Deloitte, by the PricewaterhouseCoopers, the another uh, data, correct, which uh, talks about the financial inclusion, which talks about the women entrepreneurship, which talks about the various other policies, correct, uh, given by the country in terms of Stand Up India, Startup India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, self reliance, self resistance. So that is why I have chosen the uh, topic of my uh, the topic of my presentation today, and I would like to speak on women entrepreneurs, old key to India's economic growth. So, friends, uh, my camera is on. Hello. Can anybody would like to say? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope it is visible now. Yes, sir. I don't know, but uh, where is the uh, PowerPoint going? Let me share one more time. You can uh, select the whole screen, sir. It will be yeah. much better. Yeah, I think it's visible now. 
Because you now in PPT mode, on... not in slideshow mode. No problem. It is, but my presentation is visible to everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Actually, we are working on different platform, and this Webex, especially by some companies or the uh, seminars, often uh, given by either CIA or PhD chambers. So it took, I think, 10, 15 minutes uh, when I when I joined this session for uh, I think installation purpose. So let me start the today's presentation. So uh, my friends, faculty members, students, and the management of the college, I would like to share my today's presentation, keeping in mind the entrepreneur orientation, like I have said. So I would like to speak, so uh, share some data, correct? Uh, where we can say that definitely women play a very important role in terms of India's economic growth. I would like to speak about how much uh, uh, in terms of uh, GDP, what will be the contribution, correct? Uh, during this uh, two years pandemic COVID uh, disruption, correct? How it will affect the, how it will affect, how it will change the entrepreneurial orientation. I would like to speak when I'm sharing, when I'm searching and try to find out the data, I want to know the contribution of the women entrepreneurs. I would like to share the uh, types of uh, women entrepreneurial orientation in India. Ultimately, it gave me sort of an idea that let me uh, dig some more information and would like to present the past, the historical background that what happens in 20th century, 19th century, today, 21st century, and what will be the future? How uh, a man can give and accommodate the women, women entrepreneurial orientation, and why women are successful in terms of entrepreneurial orientation. So, friends, uh, I would like to uh, share the data, the statistics, the facts. So, women entrepreneurs have potential to be the biggest force in India's economic growth. I have highlighted uh, the data, the statistics you find in my today's presentation. And the country's economy could grow much faster if women were part of its workforce. Number second, if I have already mentioned that I have referred the data of McKenzie, Pricewater, or Scoopers, KPMG in terms of the women entrepreneurship, in terms of the contribution GDP. So where I would like to mention that it could add up 770 million billion or more than 18 percent to GDP by 2025 simply by giving equal opportunities to women, because women's to be considered as job seekers but also job creators, such as via entrepreneurship, which is the space of women are rapidly taking across India. One more big growth factors that has been the power of women in small business, leveraging the internet and using digital media to reach millions of customers. This is the point I would like to mention that has been added this point has I have been added in today's presentation because of this pandemic, COVID-19. Otherwise, it would not have been possible that where women have given an opportunity to use internet, to use digital media platform. And according to India's largest woman platform, she, the people, have mentioned that women go beyond social responsibility and have a positive impact on the economy. Women-owned companies also give more jobs and create substantial revenue and business growth, that is an effort to reinforce the role of women in the economy. So two, three points I would like to add. You see the, uh, in terms of GDP, in terms of job creators, not job seekers, how we are using internet, digital media platform, and in terms of qualitative and quantitative aspects, substantial business revenue growth. India women also make half of the country's population and 10% of the world population. This is the strength of the India. And as a country, we have to find out to employ and meaningful engage uh, such a strong potential workforce. And one of the big way of doing to encourage the entrepreneurial uh, orientations among women. I have already put forward this thought that COVID has forced people to think disruption and movement have shown agility and flexibility in taking change 
on switching digital and using its enterprise for small business growth also. India women, half of our 1.4 billion population have significant population to lift the economy into the next phase. I said that what will be, uh, where do we see ourselves in 2025, 2030 or 2050? And the internet is a leveling field. A woman understand digital, they become more confident and it gives a key source of information that they need and help to empower them. So friends, when I am taking, when I am preparing this for lecture, I try to find out and I will show you that how I have uh, come across, how I have reached this particular slide, because this is uh, one diagram that will talk that why women makes the best entrepreneurs, because one side you have the fear and another side you have an ambition. So fear talks about what if I fail and ambition talk about what the world need this and ultimately it needs to conclusion a sort of birth of entrepreneurship. Now, I try to find out and being the first theme, the speaker, I would like to show that how do you classify the women entrepreneurs in India? So I have again, I am having, having the adding that who is the first woman entrepreneur? So I have written the Kalpana Saroj. She is also recognized as a TEDx speaker and she is the chairperson of Kamani Tubes in Mumbai. So first woman entrepreneur in India, who are the youngest female entrepreneurs in India? I have given, I have narrated the examples, Aditi Gupta, Sai Shri Chal, Chitra Daga, Shraddha Sharma, An Anamika, Sen Gupta. It comes under the classification of youngest female. Then who comes under category of most successful female entrepreneurs in India? So we talk about Falguni Nair, Kiran Majumdar Shah, Indra Nui. Then again, I have classified who is the entrepreneur queen of India. So that is Kiran Majumdar Shah. In 1978, he had made the uh, self-made woman entrepreneur of a pharmaceutical firm. So one side, I'm talking about the first woman, youngest female, most successful female, who is the entrepreneur queen and who is the youngest female CEO. So Sri Lakshmi Suresh is the first youngest woman entrepreneur and he is the web designer and the youngest CEO in the world. I hope that you understand and you recognize the today's topic, the theme, what you have given. Now, how, why women entrepreneurs are critical to economic growth? So as per McKenzie report, the study had found that it would add 12 trillion to the global economy. I am previously I'm talking about the Indian economy. Now I'm talking about the global economy and it could add 12 trillion by 2025. And in best case scenario, the number would also rose from 20, 12 trillion to 28 trillion dollars. This impact roughly equivalent to this combined size of China and US economy. So according to McKenzie report, and it could realize ensuring greater equality and opportunity for the women. So instead of government looking for foreign direct investment, tax cuts to grow the economy, I personally believe that we should focus making policies to advance women's participation. Why? Because women are often as often taken as a disadvantage. Now, how if you talk about I have given you the statistics about the India, about the world. I talk about the perspectives, the duration of Indian women as an entrepreneur. Now I would like to speak that how women entrepreneurs, like I talked in the beginning, I will give you a historical background, the perspective, correct? That uh, women entrepreneurs from ancient period to modern day. So women described as a better half on men, they play the key role about the conservation of basic life support like land, water, flora and fauna. And if you talk about the Hindu sculptures, women as described as the embodiment of Shakti, it means a source of power. But today the role has altogether changed. A woman is a driver of a family and in turn nation. And they do not want to build their lives in four walls of the room. They are leaving their marks in different parts of life and the entrepreneur world is not an exception. So as I said, 
Rome was not built in a day. The development of women in the world is long process. It starts from the early centuries and reaches in the modern India and going through a lot of changes in transformations. Now, its history, what happened in 18th and 19th century? So, during the mid 18th century, Indian women used to have own business, like probably the retail shops or the small handloom business, etc. But during 18th and 19th century, more women come out and under the domination of society limits and begin to rise in the public eye. But before 20th century, by the end of 19th or before 20th century, women are running a business as a way of supplementing income. But in India, it's not only after independence they enjoy privileges. According to our constitution, women are similar to men and having various provisions are introduced for upliftment. In the 20th century, in the last century, if I'm talking about the involvement of women and their contribution were pretty noticeable. Everybody have noticed the, the presence of women as an entrepreneurial orientation. The figure of business women has expanded. Women come forward to utilize modern techniques, investments, finding a niche in the market and create sizable employment of other. I have already said as a job creator, not as a job seeker. So industrial policy, if you're talking about 1991 has highlighted the need to grow a woman entrepreneurial program. And as per 1981 census, there are around 1.5 lakhs self-employed women in India that were around 5.2% of the total self-employed people of the country. Now, there are factors. So you have multifarious factors like urbanization, technological advancement, education status of women have transformed their condition and the presence of women in the economic development in the unorganized sector. Organized sector, self-employment and entrepreneurship are pretty encouraging. This was about 20th century. The status further in 20th century, the status and role of women have changed rapidly in the uh, if you talk about the last era during 90s or during late 90s, the thoroughly ladies who could not think beyond the welfare of their family is now awakened to action. And they have great desire to progress that what awakening in the dormant individual. So women hold enough talent and skills to occupy the predominant positions. With the introduction of LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization policies in 91, the Indian economy further had working to radical change and you find the women entrepreneurs are gaining the prominent importance and they are finally supported by the banks and encouragement by family apart from vocational education to move into climb stairs of success. Present day, 21st century, where we see women entrepreneurs. So in the contemporary world, there exists a plethora of successful business women entrepreneurs in different fields in India, and they are performing well and scraping their success stories. Government also has introduced the numerous schemes like National Skill Development Policy, National Skill Development Missions to bring skill training, vocational education, and entrepreneurial program of the emerging workforce. However, the entrepreneurship development and skill training is not only responsibility of the government, there are other stakeholders also, they should shoulder this responsibility. And rising participation of women entrepreneurs have transformed the demographic characteristics of women and the economic growth of the country. Now, what will be the future? Women have become equal participants in various aspects at all levels of the society. And there are women that have shown the in industrial sector and earn both name and fame in and outside the country. And the future will see more female powers venturing into different fields, and ultimately it will lead to income generation and a greater sense of fulfilled among them. Now I try to find out why do you have inequalities in and around inside and outside. So when I'm going through the reports, either by McKenzie or the Price Waterhouse Coopers. So when comparing men and women in the business world, a number of inequalities are there. We are talking about the history, the perspective, what will be the future. But ultimately, 
the uh, the perception is altogether different. So if you see the World Economic Forum in 2019, three years back, every dollar suppose of what men get, a woman on an average gets only 54 cents, not full one dollar. Inequality also exists in terms of venture capital space. I have mentioned the reports what I have referred by Harvard, MIT and Wharton School in which the same idea was pitched to investors and only the voice of presenters have changed. But more than two thirds of investors prefer to invest in the male voice pitch. Hardly one third of the time is given to women, but two thirds who have given? We have given to male only. This statistic stands in stark context to research the short female founded and co-female founded startups tend to perform better than all male ones. From my perspective, again, I will say that this shows women are severely underestimated by investors, though they have proven to achieve better results despite of these inequalities. Now, how? Why we are going to tackle this uh, gender equality and why it is critically for economic growth. So again, I would like to mention the Harvard Business Review, the MIT or what Wharton schools are telling that research by HBR found women outsource men in the most leadership skills. It outscores women scores higher than men in key skills such as team working, innovation and problem solving. Number one. Such research bears testament to immense potential of women when give more level playing fields such as mentoring, capacity building and access to credit as well as their inherent leadership skills critical to success in entrepreneurship. Furthermore, in 2018 Global Wealth Report had mentioned that women hold 40% of the global wealth and that women had been increasing their percent of wealth steadily in the 20th century. So according to me again, if women had equal access to entrepreneurship opportunities and in turn be able to start accumulating wealth, the gender wealth gap could begin to reduce further. So we have to give equal importance to both men and women. Now how you are going to fulfill so I have given the statistics. I talk about the history. I talk about the global perspective. Now, how you are going to overcome this? So when it comes to venture capital funding, do you find significant inequalities? In 2017, all men teams attract 80% of the capital, while women received only 2% of the funding. So it shows that the problem are there. Entrepreneurship, next point, entrepreneurship might suit women needs better. How? Because women are traditionally have greater family responsibilities. So working in corporate organization can be challenging given their other commitments. But while corporations need to address their workforce policies to more flexible to women in situations, founding their own businesses might be another solution and there could be a room to tailor the work and demands according to their many commitments. Next one, how men can now become better allies to women? How we are going to solve this problem now if it happens? So the evidence is very much clear that women entrepreneurs are essential. The work still needs to be done in level of playing field, including providing equal pay, giving women equal access to capital funding, advancing women at equal rates to high ranking leadership position. We should not afraid of all these things. While keeping in mind, I have mentioned some points, create women focused networking opportunities. So women are often at a disadvantage when it comes to networking. So one way I believe that how, for example, creating more women networking opportunities, CEO breakfast forums where women can meet with senior business people and find mentors. Additionally, encourage professionals in senior positions to outsourcing work and partnering with women founded startups. Second point, make women's representation in your company a top priority. So another way men can support empowering women to encourage more women representation. A report by Deloitte has mentioned that 15% of board 
seats worldwide which show through having women in our board does negatively impact a company profitability so they are being overlooked but when it comes to c suit specifically having more women in higher leadership can have a great advantage ensuring women are represented in highest level of the corporate structure will also give leaders to begin networking with so you have ultimately boost women lead startups third point treat women are equal in business is uncommon for women to be ignored or interrupted by their male colleagues so their thought opinions diverse skill set are essential for business to succeed it is recommended supporting your business partners when they speak up in the meeting or at the workplace allow them to speak out confidently listen and encourage that what they want to do as you can see supporting women in business it is important by keeping these steps in mind and i believe that men can become better allies to women colleagues and and it will give ultimately leads to women entrepreneurship now why women makes the best entrepreneurs i i am on the last uh, slides of my participation today's uh, presentation that why women are the best entrepreneurs it is a characteristic it is these are the qualities which i am going to highlight now despite this entrepreneurial gap between men and women it is considered that women leaders in business have specific qualities so women does not take unnecessary risk first is about they are the best entrepreneurs second they do not take unnecessary risk so although risk taking is usually defining quality of an entrepreneur but business owners overestimate their ability to cope their failure but women on the other hand tend to second guess themselves it allow women to analyze the situations properly before taking action rather chasing an opportunity available in them women leaders are more likely to choose an appropriate course of action and yes they actually take more risk than men it has been proved in many researches women want everyone to feel included and engaged so women business leaders are more likely to include their fellow co-workers and underlining in the decision making they are usually more supportive and inclusive of people who are making an effort to improve their work and they are less judgmental willing to accept different points points of view and build a common consensus for achieving the mission the vision the objectives of the company women are not afraid to ask any assistance so often times male business leaders will refrain from asking assistance because they want to appear in uh, control but women on the other hand are more willing to understand they are asking for assistance is better and making mistakes that can damage the enterprise so if women are unsure of something they prefer to consult with experts who might guide them what is the process women are not afraid to put the needs of their business ahead of their ego and they that, that is where they can make a tremendous difference women leaders are more determined and ambitious than men next point friends although women are usually considered to be more restrained than men but research suggests they are actually more determined and they pursue their goals very very seriously so perhaps because women know that they will have to work twice as hard as to achieve the goals so when decided in business they really want to succeed there is no other parameter and this way they keep pushing themselves to achieve their goals and beliefs and go beyond next point students in how to strengthen women do more with less interestingly because access to finance and other investments were different difficult for women a study showed that women not only about half of what a man needs to start a business women are not willing to back down even if there are fewer resources and female entrepreneurs are used to having less opportunities and money than men so that is why you have different plans and strategy strategies to guarantee that they will definitely achieve their goals women 
have a long term view. Next point, how I am going to strengthen. For men, most of the important thing is to grow the business as quickly as possible. But they are more susceptible to getting caught in short term goals, while women are focused on long term plan. Women prefer to invest in sustainable growth that generate revenue that allow them to keep investing in their business rather than hurrying the expansion of an enterprise. This focus on long term planning might explain that why women, despite having fewer opportunities and money, manage to have a big business afloat. Next point, friends, women define success differently. For women, success is not about the profits, although it is obvious a major concern, but the legacy of the business for the next generation is very important for women. To feel successful as well as social impact of their enterprise, this is one more important reason that why generally women make better social entrepreneurs and more likely to start having her own enterprise. So it's all not all just about the money, but it having a legacy giving to next generation. So I am on the last slide, students. Last point which strengthen further women and enterprise, the entrepreneurs are actually happier. Women entrepreneurs are actually happier than men. A woman tend to start business later in life. But entrepreneurial entrepreneurship provides a lot of women with necessary flexibility to balance work and family life, which actually missing with terms of men. Furthermore, although women tend to have lower confidence than men entrepreneurs, once their business actually becomes successful, they feel much and much happier. And by feeling more confident about their abilities to achieve their goal, women happiness and the self esteem to improve. I am sure everybody having an idea about the Maslow hierarchy needs where the basic psychological needs at the bottom and at the top we have the self actualization, self esteem. So which you find especially women entrepreneurs and then make them happier. So of course, so my presentation in the last I would like to mention women are the better entrepreneurs. And uh, in the last Thank you very much for patience listening. So much, sir, for uh, briefly telling us about uh, women entrepreneurs and, and uh, you know, how, what kind of role they have been playing in today's era. And we really our participants have gained a lot of insights from your valuable words today in this first technical session. Thank you. We are really honored, sir. And now, uh, now may I please invite Ms. Uh, Neelam Diloma, Assistant Professor from Department of Political Science at Rathantham College, Ambala Kach, to please propose a vote of thanks to Dr. Nitin Gupta, sir, for sharing his words with us. Over to you, Neelam, ma'am. Uh, Neelam, ma'am, you'll be on your now. Good morning, everyone. A warm and graceful morning to our honorable chief guest, Dr. Nitin Gupta, PA teachers, and everyone who joined us. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this event possible. I, Neelam Dello, on behalf of SD College, and women cell extend a hearty vote of thanks to grace the occasion today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts on the issue of women entrepreneurship sir you told us women entrepreneurship hold the key of the economic growth of India and it is very important for the growth of a country. This will surely increase us in all our future endeavors. Your deep and intellectual way of imparting knowledge has added to the glory of this event. We have no other words to offer gratitude for your valuable presence. 
thank you so much sir to join us and sparing your valuable time with us thank you thank you so much sir over to you chavi ma'am chavi ma'am yes sila ma'am now you are audible please you can continue hello chavi ma'am audible yes ma'am you are audible you may please continue hello yes ma'am ma am i audible evon neela ma'am please unmute yourself chavi ma'am yes you are audible now ma'am a warm and graceful morning to our honorable chief guest dr nitin gupta dear teachers and everyone who joined us it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this event possible i neelam dello on behalf of sd college and women in cell extend a hearty vote of thanks to our resource person dr nitin gupta who spared time from his busy schedule to grace the occasion today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts on the issue of women entrepreneurship sir you told us women entrepreneurship hold the key of the economic growth of india and it is very important for a country this will surely increase us in all our future endeavors your deep and intellectual way of imparting knowledge has added to the glory of this event we have no other words to offer gratitude for your valuable presence here sir thank you so much sir to join us and sparing your valuable time with us thank you so much sir over to you chavi ma'am thank you so much neelam ma'am uh, thank thank you so much nitin sir for sparing your valuable time and for being here with us today and for sharing the words of wisdom with our honorable participants we are really honored by your presence and we hope to have continued support with us even in near future thank you so much sir now uh, since we realize that uh, after the welcome address and uh, with the words that uh, dr nitin gupta has shared with us we have already been uh, you know acquainted with a lot of aspects related to women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth and now we also have the opportunity to carry forward the session and uh, we have an opportunity to listen to another expert in this field uh, dr harpreet singh bedi professor and assistant dean training and placement from mithil school of business lovely professional university jalandhar and now may i please invite Ms. Zeenat Madan, to please introduce our resource for this session. Would you use Zeenat, ma'am? Thank you, Chavi, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Okay. Thank you so much. A very good morning to everyone. I am highly privileged to welcome and introduce the person who is repertoire of knowledge, Dr. Harpreet Singh Bedi. Sir, I, on behalf of Sanatan Dharm College, extend a very warm welcome to you. Dr. Harpreet Singh Bedi is a professor and COD training and placement at Mithil School of Business, lovely professional university, Pagwara, Punjab. He is gold medalist in Master of Business Administration. He is recipient of Academic Honor Award in PG DBM. He is a certified professional for Microsoft Excel by Microsoft and financial modeling by NSE India. Dr. Bedi is an academician. with a work experience of over 17 years his research area is entrepreneurship dr bedi has contributed more than 60 papers he has presented papers in institutes of national and international repute he has 26 publications out of which 12 publications are in scopus index journals his research work has been cited over 500 times by research community 
He has been awarded for the best paper at International Conference on Excellence in Research and Education conducted by IIM Indore. Dr. Bedi has also been reviewer for many Scopus Index journals. Helion Elzvier has recognized his contribution in reviewing by awarding him a certificate of outstanding contribution in reviewing. So we are fortunate enough to have such a diligent personality with us. Now, without any further ado, I invite Dr. Harpreet Singh Bedi to deliver his discourse. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Thank you for, uh, first of all, I congratulate all of you for conducting a workshop uh, or the national seminar and the conference on a topic which is the need of the hour, women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I will have prepared a presentation which I share and uh, I want this, let make this session as an interactive session. So it's not only a one way traffic, only I will give, uh, I will speak and you will just listen. So I want all of you should participate and discuss about this concept and what is actually required. So somebody can please confirm to me whether my screen is visible or not. That's visible. Uh, okay. Thank you. So uh, the topic is women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth. Uh, it's important to know what is the population of the world, what is the contribution of the male as well as female contribution or this composition. So if we look at the world population, the total population of the world is around 7.87 billion uh, is the people, 787 crore, out of which roughly around 50% is the male population and 50% in female population. The females are equal in number across globe, whatever is the male population. But if we talk specifically in context of the India, in India, out of 139 crore, we have around uh, 67 crore is a female population and 72 uh, crore is of male population, which okay, more or less seems fair. But do you think the entire globe or uh, all the countries are having the similar kind of the uh, this distribution? Anybody can uh, can guess whether this is more or less equal across the globe? So many of you have heard about many Arabian countries. Now look at these Arabian countries, Qatar. So the female population is of 25% only, whereas the male population is 75%. UAE, female population 31%. Oman, Middle East country again, the female population is of the 34%. But similarly, all of you know Hong Kong, uh, sorry, the Ukraine is quite in news, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine as well as Russia. Both countries are having around female population of 54%. So Qatar is the lowest country uh, where female population is of 25% uh, and the highest in this tally is around Hong Kong or Ukraine, Russia. There is a maximum the countries where the maximum female population is of 54%. Now, this itself is a good research question. Uh, why the female population is so low in these Arab countries? So if somebody is interesting in this research on gender diversity, so this could be our one interesting question where all of you can, uh, we all need to think uh, why it is so, why it is so, why the uh, female population is low in these Middle East countries. With this, now let's discuss about what is the role of the women in this society. Uh, do we consider women as a equal, do we give equal opportunities to the women? So what is the image of the women in this society? So if we talk about the women entrepreneurship, women entrepreneurship is never ever possible if we know if the women's, if we give the, if we are not giving the equal rights to the women. For this, we need to know what is the role of the women in society or what is their image in the society. So still, though we are in the 22nd, uh, 21st century, still women are considered, whatever the role they have been considered, they are supposed to uh, support their husband, manage their house, cook meal, and raise children. So even as on date, this is the how the uh, male community 
looks at the uh, females. Now, uh, you will surprise to know there are 18 countries, these are the African countries, uh, primarily the African countries, where women have to take permission from their husband. Do you think, is it fair enough if they want to do for work, go for the work outside the home, so they need to take permission from their husband. And we are talking about the women out of motion. So we are talking about the women empowerment. Now look at the, these dynamics first, and then it makes sense we should talk about these things. Now, there are 59 countries across the globe where there is a no legal protection against women for any kind of the sexual harassment at workplace. So this is again, uh, even Russia is there, there's a, some of the Middle East countries, the African continent are there. Uh, still in India, do you think all the women are have the equal right in the property of their uh, fathers or the parent property? Still, this is a question mark. Na? Though in India, we call the women have the right, but uh, this is not uh, very clear. So there's a 75 countries across the globe where women, which restrict the right of the women's property, women's property right. So whatever your ancestral property, so whether the women are entitled a share from the same or not. So this is still in the question mark. Okay. Uh, so we are talking about the women entrepreneurship. So women empowerment, if you don't have the right from the ancestral property uh, and will it make sense? Should we talk about these things or well, there's a certain other things which is more important. Uh, similarly, the kind of jobs that women can go, can go for. Okay, so there is a hundred four countries across the globe, hundred four countries, where which restrict women to enter into some kind of the jobs. All kind of the jobs are not available globally for women also. So uh, this actually restrict two point seven five billion women. Okay, the world population is seven point eight billion. Out of 7.8 billion, approximately around 30 to 40 percent uh, women are restricted because of this kind of the restrictions. So in many countries, there is a restriction where women cannot work. So these are different countries have their own kind of the task uh, where the things where women cannot go for uh, that kind of the jobs. Even if you talk about in India, have you seen any woman driving a truck? Might be one or two. But do we, is this profession open for the women? Might be answer is yes, but we are not having a equal participation of the women in uh, all economic activities. And this point has been rightly raised by, rightly raised by the Nitin sir in his previous presentation. Uh, the women, role of the women in economic activities is very crucial. So women entrepreneurship is one of the best way to empower the women. So if generally we say about women empowerment, what comes to the mind if we are talking about the women empowerment? So empowerment means to give authority to do something, but do still we feel in India, the women have the authority to take their decision by their own. In many aspects in India, in rural India, India, if you talk about the UP, you talk about Bihar, do the women have the right to start a business. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of powerlessness, insignificance for women, which actually as a uh, country, we need to think, we need to uh, make some amendments in the law, we have to make certain legal rules where the women can be empowered. So we should give the decision making power in the hands of the women. So this is actually uh, is the need of the hour. Why I call this a need of the hour? Uh, so now let's look at the some other look this uh, problem from the different prospect. As of now, we have a, as an India as a country we have a population of around 140 crore. Okay, globally we have a population of 787 crores. So if the population keep increasing, increasing, and increasing, can we think for the prosperity? Will we, do we have a food to serve? Let's say if the population of the world population grow to uh, 1000 crores from 787 crores, if Indian population go, will grow to uh, 170 crore, 140 crores to 200 crores, do we have a sufficient infrastructure? 
to support all those 200 crores if the population keep growing like this so it is important uh, to empower women it has been witnessed so the countries where the women empowerment is more women are more in employment or more in entrepreneurship the population growth of those country is comparatively lesser vis a vis of the countries where the women has not been empowered so the countries where the women are not been empowered and they has been uh, restricted to a housewife kind of a role only the population growth of those countries is comparatively higher so this is uh, another area where as a country as a policy makers uh, we need to think and we need to uh, decide accordingly so today we are talking about a topic called as a women empowerment and an inclusive growth women empowerment and inclusive growth uh, inclusive growth is a broader concept vis-a-vis -vis of the economic growth or economic development so inclusive growth it include uh, again it is a one of the art of empowering uh, women also if we want uh, to serve the country so inclusive growth is include components like skill development financial inclusion technological advancement no doubt it is uh, economic growth is a part of this as well as the social development so we are not restricted only towards the economic development but what are the social problems like the problems of poverty again uh, inclusive growth cover all those aspects uh, it means to create opportunity for all to figure out the problems of the society and to provide a permanent solution for all those problems so uh, that uh, masses can be benefited from the same so now if we talk about the women entrepreneurship and economic growth or the inclusive growth or economic development once we will go through a literature as has been discussed by the previous uh, speaker uh, women entrepreneurship leads to economic growth or economic development there is no doubt about this there are many many studies which are available which talk about on the similar line so they talk about what is the role of the women in the economic development the countries where there is a women are empowered they are in entrepreneurship uh, these countries are having the higher economic growth but there is a one important research question uh, do women do women own enterprises contribute more towards gdp then men own enterprises is it right if we are saying only women entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship need to be a broader topic okay uh, so somebody who is looking to have a career in the field of or having a they want to pick this as a research area so he this could be a one of the interesting research question uh, though as a country we are promoting a women entrepreneurship no doubt we have to uh, focus on this aspect but the purpose need to be something different so generally people are saying women entrepreneurship and economic development so rather than it could be the gender diversity so now uh, uh, let's first look for this what has been uh, is as of now many of you have heard about the sdgs of un united nations so united nations have established various uh, strategic sustainable development goals so one of their goal of the sustainable development sdg might be all of you those who are in accreditation uh, for nag nba they all have this uh, one component for uh, how your curriculum and uh, your academia is actually contributing towards the sdg sdgs sustainable development goals of the un so there is one of the agenda of the un is leave no one behind and this is possible this is possible if we eliminate gender discrimination so gender discrimination is one of the significant reason for making the people behind if we want leaving no one behind then we have to look for the gender diversity but now let's look at uh, the magazine called catalyst what they have published okay uh, the contribution of the women in the workforce in india in total labor force in india is only around 20% so whatever is the entire labor force in the country women are are 
contribute the participation of the women is only about 20% which is uh, quite low and similarly uh, again we have seen uh, women many women they start their career they join entrepreneurship or they join some organization as a uh, for employment and they leave after uh, marriage or after 3 4 5 years of their job they leave the job because of the other responsibilities okay uh, this pattern has been seen more in case of the rural women vis-a-vis of the urban women so rural women or those initially they don't go for the entrepreneurship or the employment if they go they leave the job or they leave their close their enterprises this is again one of the uh, interesting fact which has been highlighted by a magazine called as a catalyst similarly there is another aspect of the gender diversity or uh, the women participation in indian workforce so for a similar kind of job for a similar kind of job women are generally being paid around 65% of their male counterpart so they are doing the same job but they are paid less for the same work which is again uh, against the fundamental role uh, fundamental rights so we talk about uh, same job same, uh, same pay for the same job but this is a uh, discrepancy which has been witnessed which has been seen which has been observed by all the policy makers but still we are not working on this though there is a certain rules but still this exists condition exists similarly if we talk about the women contribution or let's say the participation of the women as a in a top management uh, if we talk about nsc bsc listed companies around only 3.7 or you may say roughly around 4% companies are having women as ceo or managing director so if i will say can you name any five women entrepreneurs if you will if you will say somebody name any five male entrepreneurs you will say ratan tata mukesh ambani you will and uh, this godre uh, aditya bel this birla uh, kumar mangalam bank kumar mangalam birla adit uh, adi godrej rahul bajaj you may give me hundreds of the male entrepreneurs but if i will tell somebody give me a 10 female entrepreneurs name any 10 female entrepreneurs you can practice this in your class uh, you will find hardly the people may say uh, three four names and after three four names they will have to think what next this is a problem or this is a problem in india uh, nsc listed companies only 3.7% uh, ceo or managing director are women or the world women in 2019 if we look at the board of directors board of directors of all listed companies nsc and bsc only 13.8% women are there in the board of directors of all listed companies okay uh, though we talk a lot about uh, ease of doing business and all other world rankings where the india is progressing uh, there is a index called as a gender gap index there is a index called as a gender gap index okay and india has slipped in this level so we slipped to 112 position from 108 position and it is interesting if you will read the second line it take india close to around 100 years to bridge a gap in the area of polit- politics economic economy health and education so if we want there should be a equal participation of the women entrepreneurs or the women uh, in this politic politics economy health and education sector only it minimum take around 100 years 100 years do we have a time to wait for next 100 years and that to only in these four parameters once you will go this go for this report this report say it will consider all the aspects all the aspects with the equal participation of the women it is going to take around 247 years where in india uh, there is a equal participation of the women in all the aspects so do we have a that time if we want to remove this if we want to remove this so there is a need for certain kind of the reforms we need to empower women if we will not able to empower women there is no fun of talking about the women entrepreneurship 
so women entrepreneurship again the women are empowered to take their decision they are empowered to decide to start or close a business by their own without are uh, taking help from their husband their family and so on for this there is a lot many legal reforms are required so even if you will go to this report and you will see so this is a countries which are restricting women for one or another thing so there is a, a huge list is there there is a huge list is there these kind of initiatives will actually help the country in the overall economic growth okay so there is a certain kind of the legal framework is uh, improvements are required uh, if we talk about the entrepreneurship the most important report or most widely used report in the area of entrepreneurship is a gem report global entrepreneurship monitor uh, published by babson college okay so this is a world's most popular most authentic report or in the field of the entrepreneurship uh, so anybody who is having an interest in entrepreneurship or looking for a research in the area of entrepreneurship or want to pursue this as a career please go ahead with this report uh, global entrepreneurship monitor report 2021 2020 2020 2021 they publish it every year they clearly specified the women entrepreneurship has a big role if we want to promote inclusive growth so in all developing countries if we are not empowering women if we are not involving women in entrepreneurship the inclusive growth is not possible and it is interesting there is something which has been marked in red you may read in low to middle income countries 17% women are entrepreneurs and 35% aspire to become entrepreneurs this is the area where all of us need to emphasize 35% women in middle in low and middle income countries are actually aspiring to become entrepreneurs do you think this picture is similar in the uh, western world the women in the western world do you think the women entrepreneurship is higher or lower in western countries or in the uh, developed countries vis-a-vis of vis-a-vis of the developing countries anybody can give his or her opinion so do we think the picture is more or less the same the aspiration now look into this this is again the gem report okay global entrepreneurship monitor report 2021 for 2020 so there is a few things which i need to highlight it is a low to middle income so what this yellow bars yellow bars represent the intention so what this yellow bars are representing yellow bars represent the intention look at the intention in europe as well as in north america the peop- the women don't aspire to become a entrepreneurs they don't aspire to become the entrepreneur but if you look at the uh, middle east or the low to middle income countries the aspiration is much much higher vis-a-vis of the europe as well as the countries like us canada developed countries north america okay the north american continent and the europe is uh, aspiration level is very low uh, but luckily we are in india and uh, where the aspiration level is very high and there is a one more fact which has been highlighted in the uh, global entrepreneurship monitor report women are overall about 10% less likely to report a business closer than men if a men start a business vis a vis a women start a business so there is a 10% less likelihood that women will close down the business no doubt whatever the business whatever the startups which take place many startups die within a one year or within first five year of their life but uh, the statistics reveal women entrepreneurs are more dedicated towards their business the possibility of the closure of a business this is lesser vis a vis of the male entrepreneurs okay but if we talk about the pandemic yes pandemic we had a hit from uh we had a hit because of the uh pandemic but let's before this talk about the motivation so this is i think more or less all those who are presenting a paper today this is the proven facts which all of you are known what are the motivation for entrepreneurship uh but the interesting thing which we want to know the motivation the reason it is more or less remain same whether we talk about the men or we talk about the women so 
again you there's a family tradition there's a family owned business there's a uh, there's a i could say the greed to earn more money i'm using the word deliberate using the word greed or we want to get recognition i my education is like this or my experience is like this there's a scarcity of job so all those are the kind of the factors which motivate somebody to go for the entrepreneurship if we will go in detail you find there is a two kinds of the factors one is a pull factor another is a push factor so pull with something from the inside which encourages you which motivates you to go for the entrepreneurship despite of the gender whether you are a male or female uh, but there is a certain sometimes there is a situation which uh, compel you to go for the entrepreneurship like the job scarcity and uh, there is no one else in the family Uh, because that all may be the reason. This is a pull or push factor. So you can go through the pull and push theory that will talk about what are the factors which are encouraging somebody to go for the entrepreneurship. But the interesting thing is the factors are same uh, for both for men as well as women. There is no difference among those factors. Uh, so if we are talking about the impact of pandemic on women entrepreneurship, yes, pandemic. <coughs> across the globe has a adverse impact on the entrepreneurship so but if you talk about who is impacted more male or a female so the gem report say uh, it is a the report says 20% it is the women entrepreneurs are more likely to get impacted because of this uh, pandemic so uh, 20% women entrepreneurs are 20% more likely to close down their business with a wise of the pandemic and this gap this is on an average across the globe but if we talk about in the north america as well as europe women entrepreneurs are 50% more likely than men to close down their business because of the impact of pandemic and the situation of india is not different from the rest of the world so situation is again the same so if you look at the reasons for the closure of the business by the women entrepreneurs during 2020 uh, or you may say early 2021 there is a one of the biggest reason this blue color represent is the corona virus pandemic so business are not profitable is not a major reason of the closure of business they are not getting the finance so once many of you are presenting paper today evening and you find uh, what is the problem the women entrepreneurs and those are getting the business is not profitable they are not getting the finance they are facing the problems in marketing all those reasons are not as prominent in the last two years as of the pandemic so pandemic has hit them adversely uh, they closed on their business uh, but there is an interesting another few another interesting facts which i able to observe from the uh, report of this global entrepreneurship monitor report uh women tend to run much smaller business with a wise of the men do you agree with this so it again was a eye opening or a shock for me once i read this report uh so this report say uh if we talk about the women who started a business with a wise of men who started a business uh as a sole as a solo entrepreneur is a only a man or a woman who is running the business so 36% women have started their business as a uh, as a sole entrepreneurship which is vis a vis 24% men if we talk about number of employees under them so uh, the where the employee strength fall between the 6 to 19 where the employee strength fall between the 6 to 19 so number of the women entrepreneurs are almost half of vis a vis of the men and again uh, if we are talking about uh, managing a business where there is a more than 20 employees the condition is rather worse so this is a some area where all of us even as an educationalist as an academician as a researcher we need to think what restrict women to manage a larger organization so there may be a number of research question in the field of entrepreneurship but this might be an interesting question uh, what restrict women to manage a larger organization so whatever the data says the data says women yes have shown uh, the competence of starting a business they are managing a business 
but all those businesses are smaller vis-a-vis -vis of their the male uh, counterparts. Similarly, once we have gone through this report, the Journal Entrepreneurship Monitor report, this report again highlight, highlights few other aspects also. Uh, the report says women are almost 10% less likely than men to report seeing a new business opportunities. Their visionary power, the visionary power, the foresightedness, the women entrepreneurs are not the what the report says. This is as per the global entrepreneurship monitor report. They are <clears throat> women entrepreneurship are ten percent less likely. They having a fear of failure, fear of failure. So this is again is a higher vis-a-vis -vis of their male counterpart. Similarly, they are almost twenty percent low in their confidence vis-a-vis -vis of their men counterpart for starting a business. This is again certain uh, challenges which has been highlighted by the uh, report and this is again quite a, this present a very good point for uh, all those academic institutions and entrepreneurs researchers to think even the policy makers. So how we can help women in improving on all those aspects. No doubt there is a one of the challenge for the women entrepreneurs is about their dual role. They have to manage the business, but along with the business, they have to manage their home also. This is one of the significant uh, issue. So uh, the another thing which I want to highlight to all of you, uh, <coughs> this report say uh, in low to middle income countries, 17% women are entrepreneurs. Is the condition the same in India? So the report say these are 17 percent women are entrepreneurs in low to middle income countries and 35 percent aspire to be entrepreneurs. Do you think India present a similar picture? Anybody can think? Now just look into this data. This data is from the national sample survey by government of India. Okay, the last data is available till 2014 only. Afterward, there is no further data is available. Mm -hmm. So as per this report, uh, the, there are around 2 crores, uh, this number in lakhs, so 198 lakhs uh, is the, or I could say there's a 2 crores enterprises are there uh, as MSMEs and out of which the contribution of the women or women owned enterprises is only around 18.06 lakh which turns out as 9%. So this again highlight and another question or raise another research question, why women entrepreneurship is lesser in India vis-a-vis -vis other developing countries. Okay, why women entrepreneurship is lesser in the country, India vis-a-vis -vis of the other developing countries. So this is another interesting research question where uh, if somebody is aspiring for this field can look for and can figure out what is the reason and this might help the policy maker as well as the government of India to <clears throat> work upon or uh, may set the direction of the future research. So this is another interesting question where all of us can uh, think for. Now just look at the state-wise breakup. Look at the state-wise breakup. We have a state like Meghalaya, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh where the contribution of the women entrepreneurship or women owned enterprises are around 34% in Meghalaya, Nagaland is around 25%, and National Pradesh is of 24%. So all this data has been taken from the National Sample Survey. Okay, National Sample Survey issued by the government of India. So this data is the government data only. So these are the Northeast states, even the Chandigarh the number of women owned enterprises is around 20%. I'm not going with the absolute number, but the percentage term, these are the kind of states where is having a good number of the sufficient number of the, not the sufficient, but again, a good number of the women entrepreneurship. But what is the situation in the state of Haryana? Anybody have ever thought of? What is the situation in Haryana? You all, I assume major of, many of you uh, belong to Haryana state only. What is the situation in Haryana? 
Okay, now look into this. So, Haryana, this fall at 3.29, last sixth, last seventh. Okay, seventh from the last. So, in Haryana, the situation is around 3.29% enterprises are owned by the women. If you look at Uttar Pradesh, again 3.36% and so on. Even if you look at Punjab, the picture is not very good. Even in Punjab, the picture is around 8%. Now, even if we are talking about this 8%, are we sure if we are saying this 8%, do we, do we have a conviction in our voice if we are talking about 8%? Do remember there is a concept of the glass ceiling. There are many enterprises which has been registered, which has been registered only with the name of a woman as an entrepreneur and that could take the uh, various benefits which has been uh, the initiative taken by government to promote the women entrepreneurship and to take those benefits some people have registered their companies on the name of the female and but they are only a rubber stamp or there is a glass ceiling kind of thing who is managing the business the husband the father the uh, son is managing a business but the business is registered on the name of women. So despite whatever the number is <coughs> represented here, overall 9%. Do we actually believe this is actually a 9% is a woman entrepreneurship, women owned enterprises? This is a, another research question which we need to highlight, which we need to uh, figure out and where we can work and can look for an answer. So many of the UTs is having uh, around 0% uh, women entrepreneurship uh, in many of the UTs. Okay. So this data again present a lot many research questions. Something like if you look at the absolute number, the absolute number, look at the state of the Tamil Nadu. State of the Tamil Nadu. 3.03 lakh is a woman owned enterprises. Look at the state of Kerala. 2.31 lakh is the number of women owned enterprises. Similarly, uh, the state of West Bengal. 2 lakh units or the 2.05 lakh units are owned by the women entrepreneurs. So uh, why these states are having more number of the women entrepreneurs vis-a-vis -vis of the another states. So we need to understand their policies, what these states are doing, why the women in these states are more inclined towards the entrepreneurship, why not the rest of the country. If we look at the percentage of the women, percentage of the women owned enterprises. So why not is, is on the higher side, on the upper side? Not, not all state, but if you look at the top three states, this is from the Northeast. Okay. Uh, the Meghalaya, Nagaland, Natural, the top three states are from the Northeast. Why it is so? Even Sikkim, there is a 17% uh, is a woman entrepreneurship. Why this so? Why this status is comparatively significantly low in the North India? vis-a-vis -vis of the North East India. Okay. So similarly, we may say why even in the Chandigarh, the percentage of women owned enterprises are higher vis-a-vis -vis of the other UTs. If you look at the some of the UTs, the contribution of uh, the women owned enterprises uh, is almost zero. But what, why Chandigarh differ from all those UTs? So these are the important research questions where we can think for and we need to figure out what is the reason and uh, this kind of a research may will actually help the policymakers in figuring out the right kind of the reason and then they may think for uh, how they can move ahead. Similarly, uh, if we say what is the initiatives taken by the government, no doubt government has taken many initiatives in the last so many years to promote women empowerment as well as women entrepreneurship. But are all those steps in the right direction. So if you look at the whatever the initiatives which has been taken by the government of India, so I just listed a few only. I just listed a few. There's a huge list of the initiatives which has been taken by the <coughs> sorry by the government of India. But are we getting the desired result from those initiatives? The data has already been presented to you by again the data has been published by the government of India only. So we need to think. 
the reason which has been specified in the literature uh, though government has started some of the initiatives they are providing the financial support they are providing the trainings uh, the skill development programs etc for the women entrepreneurs uh, or to encourage women to go for the entrepreneurship but still there is a certain aspects like uh, lodging uh, safe and convenient travel migration support for the child support and the child care facilities which are the enabler the ecosystem if a government of india is only introducing uh, some scheme the scheme will not produce any result until and unless we will not facilitate uh, this putting ecosystem so this is what i able to get it from the literature or for this presentation uh, with this i open this form forum for the questions so if any of you have a question uh, please let me know uh, thank you so much sir so we request the participants that they can post their questions in the chat box in case there are any if any of uh, thank you so thank you ma'am uh, yeah <laughs> So I suppose the the participants are still taking few minutes to put up their questions in the chat box. But no, uh, sure. certainly, you've given a very extensive presentation with a lot of data related to women entrepreneurs and MSMEs. Definitely. So uh, we have this opportunity, and let us encash the situation where uh, we have Harpreet sir with us, and uh, we seldom get some opportunities where we have such a platform where each one of us can uh, you know get their queries or doubts cleared so in case any participant has any question or any doubt you are most welcome to put up in the chat box please Uh, sir, I think that you've explained all the concepts and all the uh, aspects very clearly, and uh, so we are not seeing any kind of questions so far in the chat box. Uh, thank you so much, sir. So actually, you, uh, it has been a very, very impactful session where you have shared so much information and so much data about women entrepreneurs here today. Beginning with the role of women in the society and status of women, you have actually articulated the thoughts of our participants today. And uh, it's actually a matter of honor for us that uh, uh, we have had this opportunity to have you in this seminar today. And on behalf of the entire organizing team of Sanatan Khan College of Malakan, I would like to propose my hearty vote of thanks to you for sparing your valuable time and sharing your insights with all our dear participants. Certainly, you have opened a lot of uh, gateways for all uh, the listeners today. When we talk about the seminars, they're actually a platform where we can exchange some ideas or where we can have some further ideas for carrying out different types of research. Apart from sharing the data and different facts and figures, you have actually uh, showed and you've actually discussed that other areas and the domain relating to women entrepreneurship, relating to inclusive growth and many other allied areas with respect to it. So once again, Thank you so much, sir, for being here with us. And we really hope that we will be uh, having this chance to be associated with you even in coming seminars and sessions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Even we have uh, some valuable words from our participants in the chat box. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. So. Uh, we would also like to thank all the participants here and all the faculty members that they have joined us in the technical session here and have listened to Harpreet Bedi, sir, for having sharing his words with all of us. So a small announcement for all the worthy participants today that uh, we will be starting with uh, the second technical session uh, at 1.30 p.m. And uh, we will be just sharing the list of and the schedule of presentations that will start from 2.30 p.m. onwards. So the, for the presentations, the very first name that we have is the serial number would be for Mr. Dhananjay. The second name would be uh, for Ms. Rashi Naram, who's PGT Commerce in Sophia Convent School. And she'll be sharing her thoughts on the paper, Gender Inequalities, a Barrier to Women Entrepreneurship. 
So we hope that uh, whatever information we have gathered so far since today morning has been eye-opening for all of us and we have gained a lot of food for thought related to women entrepreneurship and inclusive growth. Uh, so, on behalf of the entire organizing team, for, I would like to thank all the participants for being here with us for the first technical session of today's national seminar. And we will be continuing ahead with the rest of the aspects and the next technical session and the valedictory session paper presentations uh, and beginning at 1.30 p.m. So, may we please request all of you to join back at 1.15 with us so that we can continue ahead with the proceedings of today's seminar. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, for now, you all may disconnect from the meeting. Kindly rejoin with the same link at 1.15 p.m.